Practice transfers often so that you become proficient at the task before you try to lift a resident. Practice lifts from bed to wheelchair or chair, from chair to bed, and floor to bed. Read and understand the owner operator's manual. Safety is most important when performing lifts, and that includes your safety. Always use good body mechanics, keep your center of gravity low, and use your leg muscles. Separate your legs to establish a broad base of support. Keep your spine in natural alignment and never twist while lifting. Always inspect the resident's sling before using it. Check for wear, tears, and loose stitching. Bleached, torn, cut, frayed, or broken slings are unsafe and should not be used. Invicare's full body lifts are valuable tools for lifting and transferring non-ambulatory, bedridden, or obese residents. These advanced designs make it easier for the caregiver to assist any resident up to 450 pounds. They can lift a person from a bed, a stretcher, a wheelchair, a commode, even the floor. To get a better understanding of a full body lift, it's good to know its parts. Basically, a lift is made of three assemblies, the base, the mast, and the boom. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up, beginning with the base. The base rides on these four low friction casters, which are mounted to the legs. Next are the legs. There are two of them, and they're adjustable. With the legs closed, the lift can be maneuvered more easily through doors, around furniture, and in tight hallways. Use the padded shift handle to open and close them. It's pretty simple. To open the legs with the Reliant lift, grab the shifter handle with one hand and the steering handle with the other hand. Pull back on the shifter handle and move the handle to the right. The legs will open. Make sure that the handle drops into this slot to lock the legs into place. To close the legs, just reverse the process. Grab the shifter handle with one hand and the steering handle with the other hand. Pull back and move the shifter handle to the left and the legs will close. Again, make sure that the handle drops into this slot to lock the legs into place. Operating the legs on a 9805 lift is pretty similar. To open the legs, grab the shifter handle with one hand and the steering handle with the other hand. Push the shifter handle to your right to release the lock pin from its mounting hole on the base. Turn the handle clockwise until you can drop the lock pin into the opposite mounting hole. This will open and lock the legs. Make sure that the lock pin is down in the mounting hole. To close the legs, grab the shifter handle with one hand and the steering handle with the other hand. Push the shifter handle to your left to release the lock pin from its mounting hole on the base. Turn the handle counterclockwise until you can drop the lock pin into the opposite mounting hole. This will close and lock the legs. Make sure that the lock pin is down in the mounting hole. We can't emphasize enough the importance of making sure the legs are locked in the open position when lifting a resident. The lift is most stable when the legs are fully opened and locked. They must be fully open to ensure proper balance and weight distribution. The next assembly is the mast. Here you'll find these ergonomically designed push handles and the hydraulic pump assembly which does the lifting. Attached to the mast is the boom. The boom is the lifting arm and at the end of it is the swivel bar. The sling attaches to the swivel bar. It's padded for safety. The 9805 and Reliant 450 lifts have different swivel bars, but they serve the same purpose, sling attachment. Raising and lowering the boom is done using the control valve and the pump handle. To raise the boom, first close the control valve, turn it clockwise towards the pump handle. 
Then move the pump handle up and down. It takes surprisingly little effort. To lower, just turn the control valve counterclockwise. How much you turn it will control how fast the boom lowers. But no matter how far you turn the valve, a safety gate inside the hydraulic system controls the maximum rate of descent. Although one sling works for multiple residents, it's recommended that each resident be issued their own individual sling to meet their specific size, weight, medical condition, and transfer requirements. Indicare offers a wide selection of slings to meet most situations. They're constructed of soft, durable mesh or solid fabric with pad areas for extra comfort. Always check with a physician before selecting a sling. Generally, slings fall into one of three categories, full body or standard, which are available with or without an optional commode opening, divided leg or toileting slings, both of which fit around a seated person and provide added comfort with padding under the thighs. Always inspect the sling before use. Check for wear, tears, and loose stitching. Bleached, torn, cut, frayed, or broken slings are unsafe and shouldn't be used. You can adjust the slings for different body positions by using different combinations of color-coded loops that are sewn into each strap. If you want to position the resident in a reclining position, attach the sling using the loops at the end of all four straps. If you want to position the resident in a seated position for the head, use the loops closest to the resident. And for the legs, use the loops furthest away from the resident. Standard slings accomplish this by adjusting the straps or chains. Most slings have reinforced grab straps sewn into the back to assist you in guiding your resident. And although Invicare lifts and slings have been designed so they can be safely operated by one caregiver, it's recommended that two caregivers perform all resident transfers. Before you attempt any kind of lift, make sure that you understand the resident's limitations and their ability to assist the transfer. It's a good idea to communicate with the resident throughout the process. If you explain each step as you work through it, your resident will learn the routine and become comfortable with it. Let's watch several different lift situations. Before performing the lift, engage the brake on the bed and then lower the rail on the side that will be receiving the lift and make sure that the bed is at a safe working height. Move the wheelchair near the bed. Lock the chair's wheel locks to prevent movement and move the front riggings out of the way. Position the resident flat on their back in the center of the bed. Make sure the rail opposite you is raised. Position the sling next to the resident. Fold the sling in half lengthwise so that the smooth side is against itself and the bindings are on the outside. The bottom edge should be just above the resident's knees and the top edge should be slightly above the armpits. Explain that you're going to roll them side to side so that you can put the sling underneath them. To help you get in the wheelchair. So we're going to roll you side to side to help you get on the sling here. Have the resident lift the leg that is closest to you so that their foot is flat on the surface. Help them if they need it. Okay. Okay. Position one hand on the resident's elevated knee and the other hand okay. under the resident's shoulder. Simultaneously push on the knee and lightly lift their shoulder. The resident will roll onto their side okay. with relative ease. As the other caregiver holds the resident, push the sling underneath them. Roll the resident okay. again onto their back. back. 
then roll them over on their other side using the same technique. Smooth the sling out on the bed. Okay, roll the resident again onto their back. Attach the chains or straps. For this demonstration, we'll use straps, but the procedure is the same for straps and chains. Insert the S-hooks through the support bars. Insert them so the open end is away from the resident. You'll notice that the strap is intersected by a D-ring. Place the short section toward the resident's head and the long section towards the legs. You'll see that this setup will give the resident the most support and comfort during the lift. The resident is now ready to be lifted. While one caregiver stays with the resident, the other caregiver gets the lift. Before rolling the lift into position, lock the legs in the full open position. If the shifter is resting securely in the notch on the right, the legs are fully open and locked. Make sure that there are no obstacles under the bed. Now steer the lift with the push handle and move it into position over the bed. Turn the control valve on the hydraulic pump counterclockwise to lower the boom. Lower it close enough to the resident so that you can attach the sling to the swivel bar. The swivel bar should be aligned so that it's parallel with the resident's shoulders for proper attachment. Keep the swivel bar away from the resident's head. Attaching the sling to the swivel bar is a crucial step. If not done right, serious injury can result. Turn the control valve clockwise. Then give the unit a few pumps. This will elevate the swivel bar slightly and provide a bit of tension to the sling. Double check to make sure that both of the attachment points of the sling are secured to the swivel bar. If they're not, lower the sling and fix them. Now pump the unit several more times to lift the resident a few inches off the bed. When clear, gently swing their feet away from the bed. Use the steering handle to pull the lift away from the bed. Stand squarely behind the lift. Place both hands on the push handles and push. Never pull or push on the boom. Use the handles to push it into position over the wheelchair. Open the control valve to lower the patient onto the chair. Turn the resident so that their back is against the back of the wheelchair. The second caregiver should position themselves behind the wheelchair. The second caregiver should guide the resident so that their hips are as far back into the seat as possible. This will keep the resident from slumping in the chair. Remove the straps, pull the lift away. Before performing the lift, engage the brake on the bed and then lower the rail on the side that will be receiving the lift and make sure that the bed is at a safe working height. Move the resident and wheelchair as close to the bed as possible. Engage the wheel locks on the wheelchair and move the front riggings out of the way. Position the sling on the resident. One caregiver should stand in front of the wheelchair and the other should stand in back. Lean the resident forward in the chair, letting the caregiver in front support the resident's weight if needed. Slide the sling behind the resident with the smooth surface against the resident's body and the grab handles outside. The sling should be positioned between the top of the resident's head and the base of the spine. Make sure it is straight and parallel to the resident's shoulders. Push the bottom of the sling to the seat. Position the straps as far forward in the seat as possible. Lean the resident back in the wheelchair. Lift one of the resident's legs. Reach under and pull the sling out until it's just behind the resident's knee, about three inches. Repeat the procedure for the other leg. Position the lift so it's over the wheelchair. Make sure the lift's legs are in the maximum open position for stability. Lock the lift's rear casters to prevent it from moving while you attach the sling. 
Turn the control valve on the hydraulic pump counterclockwise to lower the boom. Position the swivel bar so that it is parallel with the resident's shoulders. Then attach the sling. Attach the straps that are by the resident's legs to the front of the swivel bar. You can use any one of three techniques depending on the situation. You can attach them so that the straps go under both the resident's legs. This bundling technique creates a very small opening for petite residents. You can attach them so they cross between the resident's legs. This technique draws the resident's legs together. Or you can attach them so they go under the resident's legs directly to the swivel bar. This technique separates the resident's legs for hygiene tasks. Just make sure that you use the same color straps for both legs. Next, attach the center straps to the swivel bar using a loop that leaves a little slack in the strap. Use the same color loop on both sides. Securely attach the top straps to the swivel bar. Again, make sure you use the same color straps for both sides. Make sure the resident's arms are inside the sling. Unlock the rear casters. Turn the control valve clockwise. Then give the unit a few pumps. This will elevate the swivel bar slightly and provide a bit of tension to the sling. Double check to make sure that all of the attachment points of the sling are properly attached to the swivel bar. If they are not, lower the sling and fix them. Pump the unit several more times until the resident is just above the wheelchair. The other caregiver can use the sling handles to maneuver the resident. Move the lift towards the bed and position the resident over the middle of the bed. Then rotate and position the resident properly above the bed. Lower the resident on the bed by turning the control valve counterclockwise. Once the resident's full weight is on the bed, lock the lift's rear casters and unhook the sling from the swivel bar. Unlock the rear casters, remove the lift, remove the sling. The lift can be a useful tool in picking up a resident who has fallen to the floor. Phil, what happened? Are you okay? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I'd the first thing to do in these situations okay. is to determine if the resident has suffered any injuries from the fall. How about your legs? Are your legs okay? Uh, yeah, as far as I can tell. Just need to get back into the bed. If they don't need medical attention, you can lift the resident. Okay, I'll get the lift. First, get the resident into the full body sling. It requires two people. Fan fold the sling and set it down next to the resident. The top edge should be slightly above the resident's head and the bottom edge should be just above the knees. Have the resident elevate one knee until their foot is flat on the floor. Position one hand on the resident's elevated knee and the other hand under the resident's shoulder. Push on the knee and lightly lift their shoulder to roll the resident over on their side. With one caregiver holding, the other caregiver can push the sling under the resident. Roll the resident onto their back. Roll the resident over onto their other side using the same technique. Left foot flat on the floor. There you go. And I'm going to do the same thing with my hand on your knee and your shoulder. Okay. This makes it possible to roll the sling out smoothly on the floor underneath the resident. The resident is rolled again onto their back, now centered on the sling. The lift is then moved into position over the resident with the legs in the full open position and the shifter arm locked into place. Carefully slide the lift under the resident. Have them bend their knees can I have you bend your knees and put both feet flat on the floor? Sure. 
and hold their head up as you move the legs under them. Once in position, use a pillow to cushion the resident's head against the leg. Turn the control valve counterclockwise to lower the boom arm. Lock the rear casters to secure the lift. Secure the straps to the swivel bar and make sure that the resident's arms are inside the sling. Unlock the rear casters. Turn the control valve clockwise. Give the lift a few pumps to elevate the swivel bar and put a slight amount of tension on the sling. Double check to make sure that all sling straps are secured to the swivel bar. Raise the resident until they are just above mattress level. Use the push handles to slowly move the resident towards the bed. Be sure that the bed is at a safe working height for the caregiver. Turn the control valve counterclockwise to lower the boom arm. Lock the rear casters to secure the lift. Once the full weight of the resident is on the bed, unhook the sling from the swivel bar. Unlock the rear casters. Remove the lift. Remove right. the sling. There, you can come on back. Like any skill, the more you practice, the better you get at it. Practice transfers often so that you become proficient at the task before you try to lift a resident. Practice lifts from bed to wheelchair or chair, from chair to bed, and floor to bed. Read and understand the owner-operator's manual. Safety is most important when performing lifts, and that includes your safety. Always use good body mechanics. Keep your center of gravity low and use your leg muscles. Separate your legs to establish a broad base of support. Keep your spine in natural alignment and never twist while lifting. Always inspect the resident's sling before using it. Check for wear, tears, and loose stitching. Bleached, torn, cut, frayed, or broken slings are unsafe and should not be used. Document everything, the type of sling and its condition, the status of the resident before and after the move, the preferred transfer method, resident compliance, and the length of time out of bed. Invicare lifts are designed to preserve the dignity of your residents while reducing caregiver injuries. They're reliable, safe, easy to use, and offer maximum comfort to the resident. Invicare lifts and slings, the best in the industry.